same as exponent. So sometimes we use the word power, sometimes we use the word exponent. Now the word polynomial, so let's talk about that really quickly. Poly means what, guys? Multiple, yeah. Mono means one. Bi means two. Tri means three. So oftentimes we use the word polynomial means multiple. All that means is that it has more than one term. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Those are all polynomials, okay? So it says the degree of this equation, the polynomial equation. So now you're just going to look for a term, the degree of the term, one term, with the largest power. Okay, so that's what we're going to use. Now the second line says the fundamental theorem of algebra states that a polynomial of a degree n, so for example, if that polynomial has a degree of 5, then it can't, and I kept saying, has n roots. If it has a degree of 5 and it has n roots, I mean it has 5 roots. So roots, students, is the same for solutions, okay? Sometimes we use roots, sometimes we use solutions. So you have the power, so if a polynomial has a degree of 3, then it should have 3 solutions, okay? Okay, so here we go. Examples 1 to 7 said state the degree and solve under complex number system. Complex number system, students, what is that? What's a complex number system? Is that just real numbers? No. Complex number system can also have what kind of answer? Imaginary, okay? So we are going to have imaginary and real all at the same time. Then it says, then use decimals.com to graph each and sketch it here. Okay, so example one. 2x to the third minus 5x plus 2 equals to zero. How many terms does this one have? How many terms? One term, two terms, and three terms. Okay, there's three terms. So technically, this can be seen as a trinomial. Now, let's look at each term. 2x to the second. What is the power or degree of that first term? What's the exponent for that x value? Two. two. That has a power of two. Then the second term is negative 5x. That term has an exponent of what? One. The last term of two, that's a constant, okay? So it doesn't have any exponent. So out of those three terms, which was the largest power? Two, okay? The first one. So if this has a power of two, then the entire polynomial would have a degree of what? Of what? Two, okay? So we look at the biggest... You pick out the biggest term, okay? I'm sorry, I wouldn't say biggest term. Pig, biggest power of the term. And then that is going to be the same degree for the entire polynomial. Then we're going to solve it regularly. How do we solve this, guys? There are three ways to solve. Completing the square. Should we complete the square here? Nope. Quadratic formula or? Factoring, okay? So which one should we try? Factoring? Okay, yeah. We can try quadratic formula or factoring. If you're going to do factoring, do your chart, okay? So we're going to do x or your table. Some of you use a table. Some of you use x. What goes on the top? 4. What goes on the bottom? Nice, right? Find two numbers. When we multiply, it goes 4, and add, it goes negative 5. Negative 4, negative 1. So now we're going to drop down this, 2x squared. We're going to write negative 1x, or negative x, minus 4x, and then drop down the 2. Now, what do we do? Draw the fronts. Draw the fronts. All right, make your group 
the first two terms, what do we factor out? Not 2x. Well, I put the negative 1 in the front. But if you did write negative 4, then take out 2x. But I took out, can I take out an x? Then I have x minus what? I'm sorry, if I took an x, I have 2x minus what? 1. On the second, we can take out a negative what? 2. Then I mean we have a positive 2x minus 1 again. These two groups are exactly the same. So now we have 2x minus 1 times the quantity of x minus 2. Remember, we need to drop down this 0, so equal to 0. So now we're just back to last night, guys. We factored out. How do we solve the rest? Separate them, take each factor, and set it equals to 0. Okay. Then we solve it like normal, add 1 to both sides. After we add 1 to both sides, students, we're going to divide both sides by 2. So one answer is a positive half. We're going to do the right side. That would give us 2. We're going to put them together. x equals 1 half comma what? 2. Box it up. That's exactly like last night, right, students? Nothing's changing right there, okay? But here's where the part, go ahead and pull up decimals now. Okay, don't do students.decimal. I just want you to do decimals.com and then hit graphing calculator. So now that we're in decimals.com, type in that same exact equation, but instead of zero equals, I want you to write y equals, okay? So start with y equals. Okay, so example one, what's the equation again? To what? X to the what? Second. Now the carrot, can you find the carrot, which is number six? Second carrot or shift carrot to say. 2x squared. What's the second term? Negative 5x. What's the last term? Positive 2. Okay. So this is what we have. My window, mm, not very friendly. Can you guys see it? How do I make it so I can see? <coughs> My window right now is way too big, okay? What do I need to do to make it? Yeah, can you guys see that's not, okay. I'm in like, look at the Y values on my window. Can you guys see I'm like in the hundreds? Okay, you can always click this wrench right here to the right and fix it, okay? You can manually type in your x-axis. So let's say I want it to be negative 10 to positive 10. Manually, you can always change that. You can also click the minus and plus sign. Now, I'm in the minus 300. I probably don't need that much. I'm going to start with negative 10. I'm in the positive 300 for y, so I'm going to get just 10. Is that better? Yeah, perfect. You can always manually type in or just do a plus or minus here. I want you to find... Click that x-intercept. What's that x-intercept say? Is that what we have? What's the second x-intercept say? Do we get the same one? Now, when you sketch it out, I want you to find the x-intercept, y-intercept, click it on your decimal, and then this minimum point. Okay, and then that's what I want you guys to use for sketching. Uh-huh. Did you click the wrench? Well, you, it doesn't have to be exactly. Does that have a Yeah. So click this. The X, yeah. It doesn't have to be identical. Oh, yeah. You can move these around. You can move closer. Yeah. Ours, mine doesn't have to be identical as yours. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now let's use that to sketch. Okay. Click the X and the Z. Click the Z. Click the Z. Click the Y and the Z. Click the minimum point in the bottom, and now use those to sketch, okay? So now we're going to use that. Can you guys see they're all less than 10? So I'm going to go, they're like more like around 2 and 3. So on our paper, I don't need too many take marks. I'm just going to need 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, we knew the x in the set was at positive half and a positive two, right guys? And then the y-intercept was at where? 
on decimal. What does it say? Two. Make a dot at two. Where's the vertex? Which is the very bottom point. Decimal said what on the vertex? Click it. 1.5, negative 1. Make a dot right there. And those are all we need to do a little sketch, just like that. It doesn't have to be identical to the graph on decimals. I just need a little bit, so that way this is what it looks like. Okay, so we had two answers. We solved it. We have two answers. How many times, students, is it touching or crossing over the x-axis? Twice. Okay, so keep that in mind. Let's do two. How many terms is number two? Two. What is the degree of that first term? Two. What's the degree of the second term? Nothing. It's a constant. So this student has the whole polynomial is going to have a degree of what? Two. That means, based on our definition, if it has a degree of two, we should have how many answers? Two. Okay, let's see if it's true. How should we solve for that? Take a square root before we can take a square root. Can't take a square root as is. We have to do something first. Yeah, move the 16 to the other side. That's exactly right. Can I also factor? Yes or no? Multiple ways to solve a math question. What are the factors? It's a difference of two squares, by the way. X, yep, X and 4. So X plus 4 times X minus 4. So take each factor, set equal to 0. So this left side, X is immediately negative 4. This right side, X is 4. So you can write it like this, negative 4, comma 4, or you can write plus or minus 4. That's really up to you. Okay, okay now graph it in your decimals to see what this looks like. All right, let's see. You can X out the first equation, or you can just keep adding it on. It will give you a different color. Um, okay, Y equals X squared minus 16. Can you guys see I can't see the vertex? How do I need to go about this so I can see the vertex? What should we do? Teach me. Yeah, go up, right? Um, or just go and change more of the negative Y. Can you guys see it? I can technically go in a negative 20. Now I can see everything. Okay. How many times is it touching or crossing over the x-axis students? Twice. Is it matching what we should have? What's the vertex? All right. Use that. Plot it out. Um, as you can see, the grid I give you is not going to give you 16 tick marks, so you're going to have to rescale it. The positive 4 and the negative 4, I can handle that. I just need 4 tick marks. I'm just going to go in and just make negative 16. Um, if your tick marks are not labeled, they will always be assumed what value? 1. Okay, so if notice I'm not labeling the x-axis, and I label the y. So what shape should we have for the degree of 2? U, yep, a U. Okay, so sketch that out on your notes. Some of you have a skinnier U. That's okay because we can all have something different as long as the Y value take mark is labeled. Because I'm pretty sure I don't think we want to make 16 take marks in that small space. Okay, next one. Ooh, check this one out. Caleb, can you just help me read the equation for number three? Great. How many terms, Noah, do we have for this one? Three. Three, good. So degree, Ryan, of the first term. Good. Okay, degree for the second term. Andrew, Andrew, N? Two. The degree for the third term, Reagan? Huh? The degree is a power, Reagan. So what power does that variable right there have? This right here, this x value right here, what power does it have? 
1. So that degree would be 1. Yeah, so power is the same as the degree. So out of all of that, what's the largest degree? 3. So I mean, this polynomial has degree of what? 3. That means how many answers are we expecting? 3. OK, so degree of 3 means 3 answers is coming our way. Oh my. Now what? We have three answers. We, we're expecting three answers. How do we get them? Yeah, they all have a GCF. Take out what? An X. Okay, so it's X squared minus 10X plus 25. Now what? Factor again. All right, I'm going to give you guys a, a minute to factor out that trinomial. Okay, so you and your team, please work that out. Some of you guys already know. Fill it in in that blank two spacing. Can you guys compare your team once you get the factor? And if you want to go further, go ahead. Once you have the factor, take each factor and send it equal to zero. All right, Kevin, what did you get for the two factors? I got, uh, sorry, I got x minus 5 squared. Okay, yeah. So Kevin said it writes x minus 5 squared. Um, I just wrote out twice. They're exactly the same. So take each factor, student, and set equal to 0. That one's done. Since both of them are the same, do I have to write it out twice? No, right? So as you can see, if they are the same, you only need to solve it once. But here's the, here's the dilemma. Technically, technically, would you guys agree that there are two of the fives? Right? But we don't have to write it out two times. But in math, there is a new vocab. So we know there are, right now, two values, 0 and 5. But technically, this 5 happens to be twice. So there's a word, vocabulary word in math. It's called multiplicity. Multiplicity just means multiple of two. So that's a new word, new vocab that we're going to need to know. So this one, because five happened twice, we write the word multiplicity two. That means it's happened two times. Mm -hmm. Elle? Does that mean that we get it wrong no, you're not going to get it wrong, but because multiplicity is a vocabulary, make sure we write it out in our notes. Because later, I'm going to give you x equals, let's say 0, x equals 7, multiplicity of 3. So that means that 7 is repeating how many times? Three times. So that's why I'm not going to say it's a wrong answer, but if I use it as a vocab, then we need to know what that means. Okay. All right, let's sketch it out. Desmo says, uh, you're going to need to give me the equation because I am, um, okay, in your notes, okay, let's see. Uh, for this example, Ari, can you just read, read me the equation for this example so I can type it in? Y equals what? <coughs> just the equation that you wrote down in your notes or have it in your note, what does it say? X cubed, uh-huh. I can't hear you, Ari. One more time. Two minus what? 10X squared. Is this another one? Uh-huh. Like that? Okay. So, thank you, Ari. As you can see, I can't see the top. So, you can zoom in or out, right, guys? You can hit the wrench. And I want more of the y value. So if I want more of the y value, I can go in and can you see this y axis? Maybe go in and do 20. Is that okay? Okay. Now let's compare. How many? Remember, we found two numbers. Would you guys agree? Zero and five. Look at the x axis. Is it touching or crossing at zero and five? Yeah. But there's uniqueness. At 5, we said it repeated twice. Look at it at 5. It just bounced it right off the x-axis. Can you see it? 
but at zero, can you see it runs right through it? So when it repeats itself, can you see it's bouncing it off? So when it's an even repeating, even multiplicity, it's bouncing off the x-axis. But when it doesn't repeat, like the 5, it runs right through it. What's the maximum value on the top? About 1 point what? 1.7-ish and about 18.5. Okay, so use that and sketch. Okay. So on the x-axis, I'm just going to simply make the take marks by 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. On the y, we just said... It's about 20-ish, so I just make it by 10. So 10 and 20, okay? So we had two values, 0 and 5. So here's 0, 1, 2, 3, 5. And then we knew it went downward. And then the maximum value on the top, 1.7-ish. And then about 18 and a half, so somewhere there, okay? Again, when you're sketching, it doesn't have to be exact, but try to... If it's not by one, label the y-axis immediately. If you don't label the y-axis, I'm always going to assume it's one. Okay. Okie dokie, here we go. Whoa, look at that number four. <coughs> number four, it said negative 3x to the third minus 24x squared plus 11x plus 88. Oh my, Lauren, how many terms is that? Four. The biggest power, Ryan. Is what for that for, for those four terms? Three. So that means this whole thing has a degree of what? Three. That means we're expecting how many answers? Three. Three. All right. Let's see if it's true. Any GCF, y'all? Nope. So guess what? How do we factor four terms? Factor. Yep. Factor by grouping. Okay. First two terms has negative what in common? 3x, yep, yeah, square. So that means we have x left, negative 24x to the second divided by negative 3x squared is a positive what? 8. eight. The second, we are going to take out 11, and that's going to be x plus 8. Those two are identical, so we are on the right path. Take that out, and you're left with what, guys? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, so those are two factors. We're going to take each factor and set them equal to what? Zero. So x plus 8 equals 0. Negative 3x squared plus 11 equals a 0. The first equation is easy, right? Lucas, what is the answer to the first equation? Uh, x equals negative. Good. Okay. The second requires us to move the negative 11. After we move the negative 11, Kelsey, uh, what should we divide by? Okay, negative 11. What should we divide by? Yeah, that's right. Sorry. Noah. What should we divide by? Three. I think you meant to say, not three, Noah, but negative three. Okay, so x squared. A negative and negative is now positive. Positive 11 all over three. How do we undo power of two? Square root, yeah. If we take a square root, we should have a plus or a minus. So that's going to be a plus or minus there. If we have one big radical, we can separate them into two little radical. We can't have that radical three in the bottom, students, so we must do what? Multiply top and bottom by rad three. So that will give us, on the denominator, rad three times rad three is rad nine, but rad nine is back to what? Three, okay? Now we do need to put the plus or minus back. Rad 11 times rad 3 is rad 33. So I'm going to write our answer using a comma. x equals negative 8 comma plus or minus rad 33 all over 3. Box that up. So those are the answers. I'm going to hold it right there before I pull up edge elastic. I'm sorry, not edge elastic, decimals. Ooh. 
All right, go ahead and bust out your Desmo. This looks super scary. Is it scary? All right, let's see. Charlotte Ross, can you uh, help me read? Because I'm going to X out this equation from prior. Just read me that equation for that question, Charlotte. Negative 3, 3x to the third minus what? x squared, uh huh. Oh my. All right. I can't see everything. Tell me what we should do, please. Yeah, zoom out. Okay. Okay, I'm going to hit the minus sign. Is that okay? I still can't see the bottom. Now what? Can I go up a little bit? Guys, to go up and down, especially when you hit the plus or minus sign, it doesn't give you what you want. Hit the, the wrench, and I want more of the Y. So someone tell me, how do I change I want more of the Y's on the bottom? What should I do to get more of the bottom Y's? Where should we change? Where should we change to get more of the Y values on the bottom? Should we go in and change the X values? Yes or no? Brendan, where should I type in so I want to see more of the bottom y value? Should I go to negative 80 and change that, Bennett? Or positive 80? Yeah, positive y value or negative y value? Is it to the right side or to the left side? Yeah, give me a number that we should type in so that way we can see more of the negative bottom y's. Negative 200, listen to Bennett. Is that enough, Bennett? No? Okay, give me another number so I can see everything. Uh, negative 280. 280? Okay, I like, oh, yeah, that looks good. All right, there you go. So we knew, guys, one of the x-axis was that negative 8. True or false? Okay. The other two, we knew it was not a nice number. So do those reflect a not nice number? Now look at the value on the top, this maximum value right there. That maximum value is 0.22 and about 89. And then the minimum value in the bottom, it's about negative 5.5 and a negative almost 200, like 199. So that's what you're going to need to use to sketch. Obviously on the y-axis, we are definitely not doing it by ones, okay? So y-axis, I can do the x by ones here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. On the y's, we can do by 100. I mean, this is negative 100 and this is negative 200. We have three values for the x intercept. Negative 8 was one of them. And based on decimals, this, uh huh, yeah, this is going to be near if you click the decimals. This was near negative 1.9 and positive 1.9. So go there and do okay. Somewhere there, somewhere there, okay. You have a maximum value on the top, very close to zero, because 0.22 is pretty close to zero, and about 89-ish. So that's what we want to do. 89, somewhere there, not quite 100. And then in the bottom, we have a minimum value of negative 5.5 and about negative 200. Not quite, but it's pretty, whoops, it's pretty close to there, so negative. One, two, three, four, five, negative 5.5, and then doo -doo 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 down here. Are there any multiplicity of two at all, guys, for this question? Are there anything that's repeating? Are any of your answers repeating? No, right? So that's why we don't see anything bouncing off the x-axis. Okay. Okay, let's do this one. x to the third minus 27 equals a zero. Solve. Whew. What's the degree? If that's that's going to determine how many answers we're going to have. Three, yep. So we are expecting three answers, guys. Okay. Now how do we solve? 
Oh, a cubed minus b cubed. We just wrote that formula down for the warm up. Now we have to use it again. Oh my. All right, formula for a cubed minus b cubed. Just give me the formula. A minus b, just uh huh, times a square plus a b plus. Yep. Okay. So for this one, a is x. What's b then? What's b if a is x? 3. Let's use it. Okay. x minus what? What is x minus? So a by s. What is x minus? Good. Times x squared plus what is in the middle, Zach, plus what? Remember, in the middle is a times b, Zach, so what would a times b equal to? Not negative. b is not negative. b is 3. So x, which is? Mm-hmm. Then the n, Justin, it's b squared, so what did we write? 9, okay, and then we're going to make sure that equals to 0. That's as far as we can go in factoring. Take each factor and set each factor equals to zero. Okay. The first answer should be pretty quick. Matthias, the first answer is what? X equals to what? Three. The second answer, since we can't factor anymore and the B value isn't an even number, so there's only one more way to solve. Which way is that? Huh? Fact no, no, it's not, it's not factorable. Qu quadratic formula. Because B is not even, so we can't complete the square. All right, quadratic formula said X equals negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2 times A. Okay, well, here we go. A b and c let's list them out what's a one what's b what's c yep let's use it x equals negative three plus or minus what's three square nine minus four times a is one c is nine all over two times one Ooh. complete that for me please 4 times 1 times 9, and then 9 minus that. What do you guys have? Take a minute to solve that for me. What would that be under the square root? Okay, Kevin says negative 27. Natalie, do you agree with your partner? Just under the square root. 9 minus 4 times 1 times 9. Owen, do you agree? Okay, is that right? Negative 27? Ooh, there's a negative under the square root, students. What kind of answer is that? Imaginary. So we're going to start with taking out that i. But 27 then is 9 times 3. But what's the square root of 9? 3. So that's going to be a negative 3 plus or minus 3i square root of 3 all over 2. Okay, now we have, we said the degree was three. We should have three answers. Do we have three answers? Yeah, because the negative and the positive makes that two right here with the complex. Okay, so this is all over two. Box that up. Let's see what kind of, what is that going to look like on the graph, okay? So let's graph it out. Okay, X out that first graph. I'm going to flip my computer so I can type. All right, Haley M, can you read me the equation Y equals? What was it? Great. Okay, as you can see here, I don't need all of the hundreds, so I'm going to zoom in super close. I just need about 20 on the top, 
and neg negative 40 in the bottom. Guys, how many times, look at decimals for us, how many times is it crossing over the x-axis? Once. But I thought there are three answers. The other two answers, what kind of answer is that? Imaginary answers. Oh my gosh, guys. Imaginary answers do not cross over the, the x axis, which is like the right. That's imaginary. So only real numbers will cross over the x axis. Okay, so when we have complex numbers, aka imaginary numbers, they don't show up. So for this one, we just need the x-intercept and the y-intercept. The y-intercept is at what, Reagan? So click on your decimals. What is the y-intercept, hon? Okay, so graph it out on your decimals and then click on it. Hmm? It doesn't matter what it looks like. As the, some of us are gonna shrink it in, some of us are gonna expand it out. Twenty-seven. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna make one take mark. I'm gonna label it negative twenty-seven because if I don't label, my teacher's gonna think it's one. So I'm going to plot my one real solution, and then Reagan said there's a y in a set. And then based on our decimal, it looks like this. Right, students? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to hold it right there so you guys can check that out. Number six. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. X times the quantity of x minus 2, times the quantity x plus 4, times the quantity 2x plus 7, times the quantity x minus 1 equals to 0. This is actually the easiest one out of all of them. Can you guys see that it's already factored out for us? So if it's already factored out for us, we just have to take each factor and set it equals to what? 0. But here's the dilemma. We need to state the degree of this polynomial. If we sit here, you're not being asked to, but if you sit here and multiply, aka FOIL these all out, it's going to take a while, but then what would be the term with the biggest power? Five? Can anybody see five? I thought it was like all of them. Yeah, you're right. We, we are not going to be asked to FOIL, but did you see that this is the power of one, and that's a one, and that's a one, and that's a one, and that's a one? When you multiply things out, what do you do with all the powers? Add. That's right. So because when you sit here and FOIL, if you are imagining FOIL, it should have a degree of five, okay? All right. So we're going to take each factor, and we will set them equal to zero. And then I'm going to let you guys solve these on your own. And then I want you guys to write them using a comma for separation. Okay. Once you have your answer, can you write them all, box them together? All right, Carly S. What are all your answers? Can you give it to me? Um, I got zero, two, negative four, negative seven over two, and one. You guys agree? All right, let's. You sketch it. Pull it up. Type it in. 
you, you're going to need to find those minimum and maximum points if you're going to sketch these out correctly. Okay. All right, Owen, can you read me the equation again? Y equals, I know it's X times. Two x plus seven times what? I'm sorry, two x minus seven or plus seven? Minus plus seven. And then last one was what? Oh my! It looks like I'm having a heart attack. Okay, I need more of the y values, so I'm gonna go in, click the wrench. I'm gonna currently my y value says a negative forty-eight. Oh, someone give me a nice negative value on the y so I can punch it in to see the whole thing. What did you guys use? What y value should we put in the bottom to get a whole nice... There's no wrong or wrong answer, guys. Just testing it out. 200? Okay. Negative 200. Yes, that works. Thank you so much. Okay. We knew there were five answers, right? One, two, three, four, five. Do those look okay? Now I want you guys to make sure you guys find this minimum value in the bottom and that maximum value there and this minimum value and then now use those to sketch, okay? Looks like if we're down at a negative 144 on the bottom, I'm definitely not gonna use a one take mark. So, but I could. The x-axis can be ones. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. The y's, I'm going to label it by negative 50, negative 100. Alexa, off. Negative 150. So, okay, negative 100. <laughs> Alexa, stop. On the top, we're going to do the same thing. 50, okay. So let's plot the zeros first, okay? The zero, the two, the negative one, two, three, four, the positive one, and then negative 3.5. One, two, three, three and a half. So those, oh my, they are super close to each other. So it started out in the bottom. And this maximum point on the top here is, let's see, negative 3.77 and about 13-ish, okay? So it starts out on the bottom, and then 13-ish is super tiny. So I'm going to make this, my pen needs to be, like, skinny. You guys have a pencil, so I think you guys should be fine. So 13-ish is somewhere here, so it's going to go up there, touch that. And then let's see what this minimum value. This value in the bottom is negative two ish and a negative one forty four. Okay, so negative two and then negative one forty four. So that's right there. I'm gonna go all the way down. I know it loops back up and touch that zero. And then the next max is about point five ish and about thirteen or fourteen. So point five, thirteen or fourteen is right there. Not quite at fifty. Loop back. And the next minimum value is 1.6 and about negative 22-ish. Okay, 1.2, 22-ish. So this is sort of a sketch that I want you guys to have right there. That looks intense, doesn't it? Okay, um, so this one, I just want to pinch it in so you guys can see it. We're going to stop right here. We're going to continue the rest. Uh, but if you look at, can you guys take out your practice for me? You have enough skills, students. Okay, so look at the practice for me. You guys have enough skills to solve everything. There isn't much else to do. Okay, so if you look at your worksheet, you'll find how many questions on the worksheet, by the way. What is it? 14. So I want you guys to do 1 to 10, because that's what we did today. Do you understand? The only thing that we haven't covered is the X and the Y. And that's that. Okay. But if you know how to do that, go for it, because it's just that easy. So tonight's homework, I want you to finish number one, sir. Okay. All right. I'm going to...
stop that for now. I do need to stamp your assignment. So when I call you guys, can you guys bring everything up, your notes and your homework packet?